Hey, what's up guys? It's Dave from Kernibu Detailing. Hoping you guys are all having a wonderful day just like always. In today's video, we got the Chrysler Sebring back at it again. We're gonna go ahead and wash this thing up, take care of that convertible top and clean that up a bit as well because it is pretty nasty. Um, besides that guys, if you haven't watched the previous videos on this vehicle, I'll put the links in the description below as well with my Instagram. So go ahead and follow me on there so you can keep up with everything else that's going on and also some give giveaways as well in the process. Besides that guys, remember to leave a thumbs up and also remember to subscribe as well. So let's jump into the products and tools that we're going to utilize to go ahead and take care of this vehicle all today. Right, guys, all right? so let's jump into what we're going to be utilizing today when it comes to products and tools. First things first guys, this lifetime table I've been really falling in love with. Been using it for a good minute now and the foldable ones are really nice because if you are mobile you can take this pretty much anywhere with you. Fold it up, throw it in your van, truck. They're pretty lightweight and gives you ample room to go ahead and throw all your products and tools on while you're on the job and they're pretty sturdy and balanced as well coming from the bottom to top after you're putting all your tools and products on them, okay? But generally speaking, guys, I got both of my totes over here with pretty much all the products I use on a regular basis. We're not gonna be using all this today. The main things we're gonna be using is I'm gonna be using Seth's Citrus Degreaser, okay? I gotta mix 50-50 in this gallon over here, so it's already pre-diluted. Also, Purple Powers Vehicle Heavy Duty Boat Wash. Just one single bucket, guys. We're not doing a two bucket wash method. This thing is already pretty nasty. I can't really do any more damage to it than it already has. Also, a decently used Chanel microfiber wash mat. We got a grit guard in there. I'm gonna be kind of nice to Chrysler Sebring today. And then also a vacuum. You're probably asking yourself, why the hell do you need a vacuum if you're gonna go ahead and wash the car? Well, I'll show you in just a second why we're gonna be needing and utilizing this vacuum throughout this wash process before we even start the full detail, okay? Besides that, guys, of course, I'm probably gonna be using a bit of Optimum No Rinse here and there, some tire gel, things like that. I'm kind of deciding if I'm gonna use a water base or if I'm gonna use bare bones to go ahead and do the tires and things like that. And then when it comes to the polishing process, we're gonna be doing that in a later video. So make sure to stay tuned and subscribe so you can see the exact results that we achieve on the Chrysler Sebring, okay? Because this thing is pretty bad at this point in time. Just trying to improve it slightly so we can go ahead and sell it in the near future, okay? All right, guys, just like always, I'm gonna show you the condition of the vehicle prior to the wash process. As you can see, the headlights are looking pretty good right now, and that's because we restored them in our previous video, so I'll put that link in the description below. Very simple polishing process on the headlights if you wanna go ahead and check them out. Um, besides that, the paint literally has no shine or gloss to it. There's oxidation everywhere. The worst part about the car for me personally is going to be the convertible top. As you can see, it is pretty bad, filled with a lot of dust and grime. And that's exactly what we're going to use a vacuum for to go ahead and clean out. Besides that, guys, you get your usual tar, dirt deposits around the underbody, the wheel wells, the wheels, and stuff like that. The wheels are pretty bad as well. There's a lot of iron deposits that have rusted over, so the degreaser won't be able to do much to that. But you can go ahead and polish it out. It's hopefully what we're going to do in a later video as well. Um, testing out some other cheaper consumer oriented products. Trim needs to be taken care of as well in the future. But today we're just going to focus on cleaning and washing it. All right, guys, so the first thing we're going to do is going to go ahead and vacuum out that convertible top. Now, you can use pressurized air as well. That's an option, too. I just find that going to be a little bit more difficult with dust and debris flying everywhere throughout the air and getting back on the vehicle. So what happens is, guys, when your convertible top is mistreated over time and not taken care of, it loses its hydrophobic ability and all that dust and grime gets stuck inside the fabric rather than being washed off with the rain or any of the wash processes that you go through. So I'm using my wide angle attachment on the vacuum and very simply just going over the convertible top, vacuuming out all that dust and debris that's stuck in the fabric. Um, it's a really simple process, just be gentle with it, don't be putting pressure or anything like that, just let the suction of the vacuum take care of all that dust. When you get to the sides or some smaller nicks and crannies, just grab your other smaller attachments from your vacuum and then go ahead and start vacuuming that out as well. I'm just using the general purpose crevice tool in this scenario right here to take care of the rest of the convertible top. All right guys, so now that we've vacuumed and blown out all that dirt and debris in the convertible top, we can go ahead and start the decom process on the paint and the rest of the vehicle. The first thing I'm gonna do is gonna take my IK foamer and then again, I filled it up with Zep Citrus Degreaser with a couple ounces of Purple Power Vehicle and Boat Wash. It's a traffic foam remover. What it's gonna do, it's gonna go ahead and emulsify and break down all this tar deposits, all 
this dirt and gunk on the rims and everything like that. You're probably going to ask, why don't you rinse the car first, then apply your foam solution. Remember guys, when you put water on the surface that you're working on and then apply whatever solution you're using, you're diluting your solution even more so, okay? So I want this stuff strong enough to go ahead and take care of these deposits. After that, rinse it off and then go ahead and start the wash process as well. If I do need more solution, I just go ahead, grab my IK foamer again, spray it down throughout the wash process and use that strength to go ahead and break down all these deposits we're trying to remove, okay? So let's jump straight One into question. it that gets brought up very frequently about the IK foamer, any kind of pump sprayer in general, does it speed up the process compared to a traditional spray bottle? And the answer to that question, guys, is yes. It does take you 30 pumps or so to go ahead and prime it to get its maximum efficiency, but after that point, you don't necessarily have to pump it 30 times. 15 to 20 times is more than enough to go ahead and get you quality foam for areas such as this. And also, when you're traveling the distance from wheel well to wheel well or panel to panel, you can go ahead and pump it throughout that time frame. To get this amount of foam and solution on the surface with a traditional spray bottle, number one, your hand's going to be hurting afterwards, and number two, it's going to take you a lot longer to get this type of solution and foam on that surface, so please keep that in mind. Alright guys, so after you're done foaming her up and you leave that foam on the surface for a good couple of minutes, you can go ahead and start rinsing everything down. Now, you'll notice, especially if you're using a pressure washer, that the citrus degreaser was able to kind of soften up and break down all that dirt, grime, and even some of that tar. So if you have a strong pressure washer, you can go ahead and maybe wash some of that stuff off. In this scenario, I'm just using a traditional garden hose, but the citrus degreaser will also help the touch wash process for you to go ahead and remove that dirt and grime by softening up and emulsifying all of it as well. All right, guys, time to go ahead and wash her up. So the first thing I like to do is go ahead and lift up those windshield wipers so we can get into nooks and crannies at the bottom of the windshield. But besides that, guys, like I always start from the top, I'm going to go ahead and agitate the fibers of the convertible top the best I can to get a pretty good clean. But also after the wash process, we are going to use a brush and some cleaner to go ahead and clean it off to the best of our abilities because we are going to try to add some type of protection or fabric, fabric sealant on the surface of the convertible top after we're done in a future video so we're trying to get it as clean as possible at this moment in time but besides that guys nothing fancy only one bucket obviously if you have some big chunk of rock or dirt in your wash mitt go ahead and rinse it off with your hose but besides that just go ahead and wash the vehicle starting from the top working your way to the bottom and if this is your first time watching my channel, you're probably thinking to yourself, who is this hack using only one bucket and a wash mitt rather than two? Please do remember, ladies and gentlemen, this car literally only costs a few hundred bucks. We are just trying to add a little bit of pizzazz, get it cleaned up on the exterior to the best of my abilities without using too much resources, too much time, and too much products as well. Again, we are also trying out some more consumer-oriented methods and products too, so keep that in mind. But my main focus at the end of the day for this car is actually going to be the interior because that's pretty nasty in there. And that's one of the main things that a car buyer is going to look at when it comes to a used car, especially with this age and condition, is how clean is the interior that I'm going to be spending the majority of my time in. All right, so please keep all that in mind, guys. Traditionally, I use two buckets. Traditionally, I take my time and do everything very methodically when it comes to the wash process. But when it comes to this car, guys, it's it's already as bad as it can get, to be honest with you, when it comes to its painted surfaces. So it's not really a big deal for me at all. All right, guys, so after utilizing your soap solution, go ahead and rinse it off. I'm just using a standard garden hose. If you have a pressure washer, it might make life a bit easier getting some of that dirt and grime that you miss with your wash mitt. But at the end of the day, guys, you don't need too much when it comes to a simple wash process like this. Just a garden hose, your soap, a bucket, and a wash mitt is more than enough. But please keep in mind your expectations as well when it comes to this type of method. 
All right guys, so we went ahead and washed the vehicle. Next thing we gotta do is go ahead and clay it. I'm gonna use a synthetic clay pad or disc. You can put this on your DA or your rotary as well. I'm just gonna use it by hand this time around. I find it a lot easier that way. I know where I am and where I need to go to next and where I left off as well. Gonna be using the same soap solution that I washed the car with. And then after that guys, we're gonna go ahead and take the rims, tires, and wheels and go ahead and degrease those and clean those off as well, okay? Let's get straight into it. Now you it. guys have seen me use the disc clay pad in a previous video, but specifically on the Harbor Freight dual action polisher. I'll leave that link in the description below. But today I'm gonna be using it by hand. I find by hand you can get that tactile feel to know when you're finished with that part of the vehicle and then move on to the next. I really like that. And if you haven't already used a synthetic clay pad or brick or something like that please give it a go the initial price point's a bit more expensive than your traditional clay bar but i'll tell you what it's going to last you a lot longer than a clay bar and if you do drop it you can go ahead rinse it off and reuse it over and over and over again i would say typically on a clay pad like this you can get about 10 to 15 cars out of it depending on how bad the vehicle surface is obviously this one's going to be pretty gnarly so after this vehicle, I'm probably going to toss it because I've already finished about 8 or 10 vehicles with this clay pad specifically. But the guys, process is really simple. Straight line motions. Go ahead back and forth. You'll soon see the slickness that you'll be able to feel on the vehicle surface after a few passes. And then you just go ahead and move on to the next part of the vehicle. All right, guys, so we're back to the convertible top over here. So remember at the beginning, we went ahead and vacuumed out all that dust and debris so it doesn't get soaked into the fabric and make this part of the detail even harder for us in general, okay? But right now, we're just got our regular horse hair. You can use boar hair or whatever, detailing brush. This is something that I typically use on leather. So it's not too... Um, tough, it's pretty soft, something that you can use on leather or fabrics like this, and then also just a fabric cleaner. Um, in this case, I'm using di diluted wool light. Again, guys, this stuff is super gentle on fabrics, leather, things like that as well. So, and super affordable and value oriented and effective. So, first thing I'm gonna do is spray a little bit over here on the brush itself, and then go ahead and spray onto the fabric as well. Now, you can go ahead and use the greaser, all purpose cleaner, whatever you need, but Generally speaking, I just want a light cleaning now. I don't want to go too heavy with the degreaser and then get it all over the paint and things like that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just lightly spray it. And we're just going to go ahead and agitate. As you can see, it starts foaming up pretty well. This is kind of the same effect you're going to get on your leather as well. Just like that so go ahead continue this process and then after just a little bit go ahead and flush it and rinse all this stuff out remember to also rinse it off of your paint as well you don't want this stuff dwelling on your painted surfaces trim or on your glass as well okay so flush out the roof and then also the paint and the rest of the body of the vehicle as well all right all right guys so the next thing i'm gonna do is go ahead and dry off any painted or glass surfaces of the vehicle now the towel i'm utilizing for this is the car wash terry weave towel from the rag company now this towel is super affordable and also very versatile as well you can go ahead and use it on the inside and also the outside of the vehicle like i'm doing right now and it's super impressive to see a towel of this nature go ahead and tackle a vehicle of this size when it comes to drying it off it is a great towel to go ahead and just throw in your glove box or in the in the compartment of your motorcycle cycle or something like that just for a quick clean or it is an amazing towel for professional detail to go ahead and tackle all the door jams on a vehicle with just one towel alone um, I've really fell in love with this towel I've been using it very frequently on both the inside and outside and if you want to save 10% off you can go ahead and check out my bio on my Instagram link in the description below tag on the screen so go ahead and check that out and save 10% off on some of the best detailing towels in the industry all right, guys, so the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and degrease the tires and rims. I'm still using the IK Foamer to get that abundance of foam and solution, but this time I'm going to be using Purple Power inside of it instead of our Citrus Degreaser. Now, again, guys, these tires were such in bad condition. You're not going to restore them 100% with just a simple degreaser. You're probably going to have to polish out some areas or even use some kind of iron decon solution. Not going to do that in this video. We're probably going to take care of that at a later time. Just going to do a simple cleaning and degreasing of the tires for today. But after that, guys, let's go 
go ahead and take care of the final results and our final thoughts on everything we've done today. All right, guys, so the Chrysler Sebring wash and decom process is done. As you can see, we kept it really simple. We're not going to iron X this thing or anything like that. Just a simple wash, tar removal, clay, stuff like that. We, did, we clayed out the windows as well. The convertible top was my main concern today was to go ahead and clean this out properly. As you can see, it's really clean now. No more dirt and grime. Obviously, it's got to dry out a little bit still moist from the wash process. Besides that, guys, it's looking pretty good at this point. Um, there's still oxidation that we need to take care of. But the next video that we're going to do on this vehicle is going to be really cool, okay? Um, one thing I want to test out are some consumer-grade products, things from Turtle Wax and things like that on the vehicle. Obviously, I don't want to be using high-end ceramic coatings and things like that on the vehicle. We're going to see how far we can take this by keeping it as simple, efficient, and also affordable as possible when it comes to the wash, decon, polishing, waxing, protection process as well. So remember to subscribe, remember to leave a thumbs up, and comment below if you guys have any concerns or any questions throughout the video. If you guys have any recommendations on how to improve the video as well. Always looking for um, constructive criticism throughout all my videos and everything I do, guys. Always looking to improve to the best of my abilities as well, right? So remember to follow me also on Instagram. A lot of content there. Giveaways coming up as well, so if you want to win something, make sure to follow me there as well. That's the only way you can qualify. So like, subscribe, follow, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of the day.